introduction. So welcome everyone to the IEA Bioenergy webinar series hosted by the Canadian Institute of Forestry. My name is Natasha Machado and I will be kicking off today's session. Today is Wednesday, October 17, 2018, and we are very pleased to have Moye Ajeo Marzuk Benali with us today, who will be presenting on Decision Support Tools for Bioeconomy Transformation Strategies, Introduction of Natural Resource Canada, iBioRef Software Platform. We are also very pleased to have Marie McLaughlin on the line, who will be the moderator for today's session. So to begin, Dr. Marie McLaughlin is the President of McLaughlin Consultants and an advisor to Bioindustrial Innovation Canada. From 2010 to 2016, he was the Executive Director of BIC and the Sustainable Chemistry Alliance in Sarnia, Ontario, with a focus on sustainable bioeconomy. Dr. McLaughlin has held various positions in the private government and nonprofit sectors, such as Director of Business Development for the Canadian Light Source, President of Ontario Agri-Food Technologies, Deputy Minister of Saskatchewan Agriculture and Food, and President of AgriWest Biotech, Inc. He has been and is a member of numerous board of directors and advisory committees, including BioNB and FP Innovations. And he also chairs the Industrial Bioproducts Value Chain Roundtable, which is a partnership between industry and AAFC for the bioeconomy. And with that, I will now pass it along to Dr. Murray McLaughlin to introduce our speakers for today's session. Thank you, Natasha, and it's my pleasure to uh, moderate the session today and to uh, introduce the speakers. Uh, I'll quickly uh, give a deep, uh, go over the deep bios here. Um, first, uh, Moya Azo, Azo uh, Dr. Azo is uh, and a process engineer with the Industrial Systems Optimization Group of Enmed Energy at uh, Rims in Montreal uh, since 2014. He obtained a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from the University of Lauren in Nigeria, a master's degree in process engineering environmental systems, engineering from Berlin University of Technology, and a PhD in chemical engineering from Polytech in Montreal. His experience over the past decade cut across the process design and modeling, and analysis and numerical simulation, pilot scale process evaluation, power plants, and bank and cycle. integration and energy optimization, as well as safety assessment and risk analysis of industrial processes. Since 2010, he has uh, worked on the integration of sugar platform biorefiners and craft pulp mills, process integration, engineer optimization, and conceptual process design to pilot scale development of sugar and thermochemical platform biorefiners. He has also performed scale up studies for filtration membrane systems and biorefiners and benchmark biomass free treatment methods. His, his current professional interests include development of novel biorefinery techniques, uh, techno-economic and environmental assessment, and feasibility studies of biorefinery technologies, process simulation and optimization, as well as technology prospecting and intellectual pro property creation. And the other uh, speaker, uh, Marzo Spinelli, uh, Dr. Marzo Spinelli, uh, he is a senior research scientist and manager of the biorefinery R&D program at CanMed Energy Research Center of Natural Resource Canada. He is dedicated. He is a dedicated, innovative leader with 29 years of experience as a research scientist and project manager in industrial process design, engineering, and optimization. He he has uh, co-supervised more than 40 graduates and undergraduate students and more than 20 junior and senior researchers. Um, over his years, and he has published over 100 peer review papers, uh, six technical reports, and four book chapters, as well as uh, speaker at many conferences. Uh, and he has also been granted six patents over his career. He has received numerous awards and honors from the academic industry and government uh, sectors. Dr. Vanelli obtained his engineering degree in chemical engineering from the Paul National Polytech. Algeria and Algeria, and his master's and PhD degrees in chemical engineering from the University 
the technology of the compound in France. After completing his PhD thesis, he was a research engineer at uh, Platz Lafarge uh, Mineral Department in France, uh, working on collaborative ventures with Gas to France on development of new surgical plaster based products. This led to the design and implementation of a new commercial plant in France. Uh, Dr. Mendelli was also a lecturer and research associate at Polytech Montreal. Uh, and then in, in uh, 1992, he joined CanNet Energy as a research scientist. Uh, he was an adjunct professor in uh, Polytech Montreal for a few years, and then uh, and more recently a, an adjunct with the University of Laval. Dr. Benelli's current research areas cover design and process engineering, industrial process optimization, and process intensification, with special focus on forest biorefinery and bioenergy relevance. This includes design, modeling, and optimization of biorefinery and bioenergy processes, pilot scale development of wood biomass pre treatment, and fractionation processes, pilot scale development of sugar technology platforms. Technoeconomic assessment and LCA based environmental evaluation, as well as development of multi criteria decision making tools. And with that, I'm going to hand the, uh, hand the lecture over to the two speakers and uh, let them walk us through this uh, very interesting talk this morning or this afternoon, depending on where you're located in the, in the world. So with that, I'll uh, hand it over to uh, you two folks to uh, take over this uh, lecture. Thank you. Thank you, Marie. Thank you, Natasha. Uh, hello, all the attendees. On behalf of Natural Resources Canada, uh, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to share with you the foundations and the uh, functionalities of our biofriendly decision-making tool named iBioRev. Before starting with the iBioRev demonstration, we would like to introduce the critical questions we have addressed in the context of transition towards Bioeconomy, uh, bioeconomy in the in the context of forest uh, industry. So, as uh, most of you already uh, is aware, that the bioeconomy it's uh, more than concept now. It's uh, uh, it, it, be, it became a reality in the uh, both forest industry and ag agriculture industry. And the, uh, in the context of uh, forest industry, in fact, we decided to focus on the uh, forest industry since the, because this webinar is uh, organized in collaboration with the Canadian Institute of Forestry. But the biofriendly is not limited to forest industry uh, only. Uh, in this context, uh, as uh, you can see in this uh, first slide, uh, it's more and more uh, seen as a complex uh, industry. And in our, from our perspective, uh, we want to really, by comparison to the petroleum uh, uh, biofinery is an integrated industrial biocomplex and uh, utilizing all kinds of uh, biomass, including, as I said, forestry, agriculture, and others, uh, to produce multiple bio uh, products. And to do so, as it, as it is illustrated in the uh, left side of this uh, slide, you can see really uh, biofriendly involves uh, multiple bio pathways. And along the, uh, all these bio pathways, obviously, we are uh, really tracking the, uh, the both thermal uh, uh, and biogenic uh, dioxide uh, uh, CO2. And uh, the more and more in uh, the context uh, of uh, today, the biofilies is, uh, are seen as innovative solutions to mitigate climate change. Uh, reduce dependence on fossil uh, sources such as petroleum, and also it uh, as uh, solutions to adjust to changes in uh, the market. The markets uh, include the forest markets as well as chemical food and pharmaceutical uh, markets. So 
Next slide is much more to uh, to raise some critical questions that we have addressed. I'm not going necessarily on the details of each slide, but I want to really to pinpoint the key, uh, the critical ones. For example, today, one uh, when talking with the industry, uh, what we uh, what the industry wants to know is how to sustainability create uh, value from uh, existing biomass. Uh, either unused uh, biomass or uh, residues to uh, using multiple biofriendly technology platforms. This is one of the key. The key word here is the sustainability conversion uh, of this biomass. The second, uh, at what extent the existing biofriendly pathways are robust enough to address uh, all the uncertainties of the future, uh, future conditions. By uncertainties, uh, of course, we can think about uh, uh, how to uh, competitively access to the, uh, the, the raw materials, as well as how to uh, adjust, uh, how the industry uh, can uh, adjust uh, itself with the uncertainties in pricing and in uh, being established markets. And uh, even though that uh, some of biofriendlies are uh, are built or will be built on a standalone basis. Uh, most of the biofriendlies are integrated into existing facilities. And this, uh, let us raise the, the following question. Uh, what are the, the, the key benefits of integrating uh, any kind of biofriendly uh, technology platform into existing mill? And what are the potential direct technical uh, uh, impacts? And in addition to that, uh, under what scenarios the, does the biofriendly uh, project become economically and environmentally viable? This is, these are the critical questions that we have considered to, to found this, uh, uh, our tool. So to answer to all these complex, uh, complex uh, questions, a decision support uh, driven by a systematic way to address multidimensional uh, issues is, uh, is needed. So uh, a quick uh, introduction on the, the meaning that we have on the decision support system. Uh, typically, as I said, so the, uh, the decision making is not really a straightforward process because it deals with uh, multi-criteria, uh, including technical, economic, environmental, market, social. More and more, the social policy uh, are uh, important in this context. And uh, in fact, what we can say that uh, for now, sorry, for now, there are, there are no uh, tools uh, which are uh, really available uh, in the context of uh, biofriendly uh, to address all, all these kind of, of challenges. So any kind of decision-making process should uh, include uh, internal factors and external factors uh, to, to make sure that we will provide a representative, uh, a set of representative decision uh, making uh, metrics. A decision uh, system, a decision system tool uh, should be able to provide decision making, uh, decision metrics based on the comprehensive uh, mass and energy balances for the calculation of technical, economic, and environmental impact, uh, as well as a, a methods to evaluate all these uh, criteria. So this is why NRCAM decided to develop uh, this IBIRF software as a tool which, is, uh, uh, which involves a consistent approach for pre-feasibility pre studies and screening out non-viable uh, alternative. So on the bioenergy, since this, is, this webinar is organized in collaboration with IEA Bioenergy, I want to just to share with you on the bioenergy pathways, what we are doing specifically. If you look at this uh, uh, illustration uh, developed by AEA and FIO, 
we can see that uh, we have the uh, the upstream uh, including supply and pre-processing the core process used and downstream uh, all uh, where we have the start here uh, the, the 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 place where we are working on and uh, we are working really deeply on the uh, pre-processing, uh, uh, pre-statement and fractionation uh, of bio uh, biomass to extract the key fraction at their native uh, uh, characteristics. And on the uh, core processes that we are working on, mainly is fermentation, advanced biofuel uh, processes, and anaerobic uh, digestion. Uh, and with a focus on uh, producing pyrolysis oil, uh, thin gas, and uh, biogas. At the end, uh, the end use is really the, the uh, to produce the bio-based materials and uh, products. This where uh, we are and where we are going in the in the next uh, future. And uh, this brings me to introduce briefly the IBIOF software uh, platform, more specifically the version 2.0 that we have completed, completed recently. Uh, clearly, what is very important is to mention that the goal of IBIOF software platform is to support the decision makers in uh, selecting uh, the most viable biofinery uh, technology solutions and evaluate them systematically uh, to, uh, in the context of uh, integration in existing facilities or on a standalone basis. IBRF is really a project design tool creating the biofriendly project step by step. That means clearly we don't need to have uh, a strong background on biofriendly to be able to use uh, IBRF. And the, the potential use, use, user, uh, users of uh, IBRF that we have targeted are mostly the policy uh, makers, the, uh, the uh, engineering firms, uh, as well as the uh, academia and the, uh, the industry decision makers. So the uh, IBRF includes detailed feedback database, you will see it uh, when we will uh, do the demonstration. And what, what is very important also as a key uh, characteristic of this uh, tool, we incorporated an automatic control uh, functionality to uh, adjust, diagnose, or communicate the consistent data that the user may enter, uh, put uh, in uh, iBioRef. So, uh, and I want to, to complete with the approach that we have used to uh, develop this uh, integrated tool. Overall, if you look at this uh, figure illustrating a uh, yield forest value chain, we are working uh, with the industry to collect the necessary input data from the current and new product to the, uh, the market. And uh, for the uh, current and new product, for example, we are really uh, collecting the uh, all necessary input data for the raw materials, including biomass, chemicals, if chemicals are needed in the different biofriendly uh, pathways. And uh, we are working with the technology providers to have the uh, 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 the detailed uh, or the up-to-date uh, technologies to be able to represent them in, uh, in IBIOREF. And for now, we have a different, on the production side, we have different uh, uh, models that include uh, the uh, sawmills, pulp and paper mills, uh, biofurnace, and we are uh, aiming to introduce also chemical plants in the, on the production side. As the output data, of course, we have output from the technical aspect, economic, environmental, and social. And we decided to more recently to emphasize this part on social due to the some issue uh, some issues uh, uh, related to the social acceptability 
in the first three regions where the biorefineries are implemented. So, uh, and uh, this is the, the key approach that we have used. And uh, Natasha, it's time really to switch to a demonstration. Yep, one second. Okay, there you go. It's ready for you to share your screen. Thank you very much, Natasha. Uh, and um, yes, Moi, and I will be taking you through uh, iBiref software. And um, as you can see, this is the starting screen of uh, iBiref. It's essentially a Windows-based software. And uh, to start with the software, I will start by showing you uh, how it works. It's got all the features you would expect of a typical Windows-based software. And the first step is creating a project on iBioRef. And uh, you have the welcome screen, uh, which is intuitive, as well as uh, a question asking you, uh, do you need an host site? And what an host site means is an existing production facility where you can implement a biorefinery technology. This implementation could be either integrated or standalone side by side. And just to illustrate the main features, I will start by saying, no, we don't need a host site. And uh, just to, sh walk you through the, to walk you through the software itself. Uh, essentially, on the left side, we have uh, uh, the biorefinery base case. So it could be an host site or a biorefinery case where you define the essential properties uh, or the features and the characteristics of this host site. And then uh, it's actually a wizard because it guides people who are non-experts in biorefineries or they're using the software to be able to approach step by step and make uh, the right uh, process analysis and evaluation. So we also have a uh, process data uh, section, which is where you input all technical data regarding any of your selected processes. We have the economic data section where we have the values, the economic values, the prices, the cost of chemicals and raw materials used in the biorefinery. We also have the technical impact, which represents the results, the economic impact, also the results as well from the economic standpoint, as well as decision-making metrics uh, for, to be able to make a decision, which is what we're really trying to demonstrate today. And uh, on the other side, we have uh, the existing industrial plants. Currently, we have three types of plants as host plants uh, for the biorefinery processes. We have the craft mill, we have a TMP mill, as well as the saw mill, which represents the typical mills you have in the Canadian forest industry, and also, I would say, to a large extent, globally, yeah, because the craft process is the predominant popping method. We also have uh, the tab for the feedstock and utilities, where we have um, uh, different feedstocks, electricity, steam, water, shale, and wastewater treatment. And for the wastewater treatment, we have typical configurations for wastewater treatment plants, such as aerobic treatment via activated sludge, uh, aerobic treatment using aerated lagoons and hybrid treatment. And we have the anaerobic digestion as well as the power boiler unit. On the biomass pretreatment platform, we have uh, basically uh, a chemical-free pretreatment platform. Uh, I will show you what we have under this. We have things like liquid hot water, steam explosion, as well as the instant control pressure drop, which is one of the te new technologies we are currently working and developing. It's already at a pilot scale. We also have the chemical pretreatment platform. Here we have things like alkaline, dilute acid hydrolysis, uh, organosov, and more recently, ionic liquid, as well as supercritical uh, CO2. Supercritical CO2 is also one of the processes we are working on uh, here and development. For the pre-extraction platform, we have um, enzymatic hydrolysis. And uh, for the lignin platform, uh, this is something I like to, uh, to uh, show a lot. Uh, on the lignin platform, we have all the commercial and near commercial lignin recovery technology that exists today, namely the LignoBoost system, the LignoPool system, as well as the SLRP, which is the uh, near commercial uh, already at a demo scale now. 
On the sugar platform, we have acid hydrolysis detoxification fermentation. While last but not the least, we have the pyrolysis gasification under the thermochemical platform. So what I will do today, the first case study I will illustrate is that of uh, a craft process. And I will start by, uh, I can either remove a project and create a new project. And I'll be creating a new project from scratch. And we've seen this before. And I will answer yes to the fact that we need an oast mill. And the oast mill selected here is a craft mill. And that's the representation of my craft prop popping process. And importantly, when you double click on that, you see the configuration of the craft process, what it looks like. And based on this, you can actually uh, see the process information, such as the process input, uh, the uh, cooking conditions, chemical recovery, and all that. Uh, also, something else I'd like to draw your attention to is this uh, signs below. Those, those are indications saying you have a craft process, but you do not have a feedstock. All these are inbuilt features which we have developed to be able to guide users to develop the correct biorefinery uh, cases. So I can easily add a feedstock automatically by clicking on the bulb there. And we need an electricity source. I can add that also easily. Uh, we need a fuel source. I can add that. We need a water source. And based on this, we can have the preliminary definitions of all those inputs into the biorefinery. Uh, I can also use more than one feedstock. In this case, we are having a site where the feedstock is two different species of biomass. And so to do this, I will show you how to uh, specify that. Something else Mazuk mentioned earlier on is the, the kind of database we have. Um, we have a very complex, uh, even though it looks very simple on the surface, there's a lot of data, there's a database behind it. We have thermodynamic models, we have recycling loops, and we have hundreds of thousands of lines of code behind this software that we see. And for, in this case, I can actually say uh, I'm picking a different uh, biomass for the second biomass, which is the Douglas fir. Something also very important is we can see here for any of the biomass we have, we have the detailed chemical composition. We can see the amount of lignin separated into uh, acid soluble and acid insoluble lignin. We have the hemicellulose fractions, we have the extractives. And more importantly, we also have the ultimate analysis in terms of the elemental composition, as well as the ash content of the, each of the biomass. And the same thing we can also see for our fuel database. Uh, we have uh, different types of fuels here. Just to illustrate, we have uh, classic fuels, the bunker C, oil fuel, natural gas. We also have uh, diesel oil, bags, lignin. We have all kinds of fuels you can imagine also in the database of the software. And so what this means is uh, with this, we can actually start defining our biorefinery. Another important function which I would like to show you is how we incorporate the supply chain aspect and the cost of the biomass into the, uh, into the model. For example, for black spruce, for each of the biomass species, we actually have uh, the cost. Currently, we have a, a step cost function, and we can see how it works. We can say, for example, uh, levels of steps. In this case, I will add, I can say uh, the first 3,000 tons we have a fixed cost, and based after that, the cost increases probably to 105. We can have this. And this is an important feature that makes every user be able to capture the cost of biomass in the analysis and evaluation of their individual project. And for the case of the Douglas fee, I would also specify the cost function, also by the step cost function, and then uh, we can have that. So, what we, what we see is, uh, what we see here in this case in, in the cost function is that uh, you have intuitive models saying what the cost uh, specifications needs to be. And by addressing all these cost functions, we see how the warnings uh, below, the intuitive guide changes. And what I have to address now are respect, with respect to the craft meal itself. 
And I'll show you, for example, craft mill in terms of the process input and in terms of the boilers. We have two power boilers which represent a, a typical Canadian mill. We need to specify the fuel uh, being used, the fuel being used. And in this case, uh, I will be specifying uh, natural gas as well as uh, for both power boilers. And we also have the lime kiln itself, which is uh, gas fired, and we can specify this. On the resource allocation, because I specify two different biomass, it tells us the ratios are not correct, and which is normal. But all this inbuilt thing guides users. And in this case, we have a 60-40% ratio of spruce to uh, Douglas fir. And with this, we have the craft mill specified. One last thing we need to do is also to validate the wastewater treatment uh, configuration. And for example, if I have a different configuration, I can easily uh, re-specify. Otherwise, I can just validate what I have and say it's correct. And based on this, we can specify, uh, based on this, we can specify the mill itself. I can run the process and then we get results. The first result we get is uh, based on the configuration we in input into the uh, software that the steam production, uh, the steam demand currently exceeds the steam production. And this we can address uh, with by different ways. I would address it automatically. And by running the software, we kind of get a picture of how much excess electricity exists. And to address this elect excess electricity, we can see from this craft process, we can actually export about 34 megawatts of electricity to the grid. And this pretty much concludes the definition of the host site. And with this host site, what we see is uh, by running this host site, we can actually go step by step to view the process data. The process data in this case represents uh, all the technical aspects, the steam production level, the uh, recovery boiler, uh, the power boiler steam production. We can also go one step further to see the economic data, which represents the annual uh, uptime, annual operating hours of the plant uh, mill itself, the inflation rate. We can see the product prices. And all this data, both the process and economic data, the user has the freedom to be able to modify them and adapt them to specific conditions that represent their cases. And also with that, uh, it comes to the results, uh, the technical impact where we can see how much chemicals is consumed and how much uh, utilities. We see something uh, parallel also for the economic impact. What we see is, for example, here we see uh, the operating cost for the site. And also, we can also have it as a breakdown for just a craft mill. It's also possible to see uh, on the site the annual revenue and the earnings before interest tax uh, depreciation and amortization. So after we've defined uh, the host mill itself, the next step is to define the biorefinery technology. And defining the biorefinery technology, we have a base case. I will show you it. Uh, I would go for one of the most common technologies being currently implemented into a craft process, which is a lignoboost process. And uh, we will be trying to produce a low residue content lignin, probably with peer presence as an example of uh, a sub product. And with this, I can also just drag the lignoboost onto the process diagram. Importantly, for the lignoboost process, we also have the process diagram.
we have the uh, all the process information uh, in terms of the yield and most of the numbers we have here are either validated by technology suppliers they are all validated and also by external uh, parties third parties uh, independent validation and we also have uh, the capex here something very important about the cost is that we have three different approaches for costing of plants for example we can have cases where the total cost of the plant itself is known and the user is free to specify uh, that but in other cases the user can also specify breakdown equipment by equipment or if the user knows only the cost of the total equipment excluding the cost for things such as piping electrical system building facilities it's possible to have that in this cost study i'll be using the breakdown and something that's also very important is the user only needs to know the reference capacity and reference cost. We have also a list, a list of a chemical engineering plant cost index, which I'm showing on the right here to be able to update the values to the current values for the current uh, year. And based on this, um, we see that for the lignoboost process, we need water, which is obvious, electricity is required. We need materials, uh, which is the black liquor, which will be extracted from the craft process. And also, we need to be able to send the effluent from the lignoboost process back to be treated in the craft mill. And uh, the steam source, we need as well as the natural gas uh, source. And based on this, we can run the process. And by running the process, we see uh, that even still the steam demand exceeds the steam produced, and we can actually, uh, if you have enough capacity, uh, we can uh, increase the steam production to be able to accommodate this. And this is not unexpected. It's because when you extract lignin, you, you extract energy indirectly, and you reduce the amount of uh, steam produced in the recovery boiler. So what we have here is a process that's uh, integrated craft lignin with a ligno boost uh, process and with this we can see in terms of process data we can see in terms of process data we can see specific we can see uh, in terms of the technical data for the ligno boost process we can see uh, the yield we can see the targeted lignin extraction pa present production we can see the chemical consumption in a similar manner, we can see the economic data. We can see for the craft meal section, which I can minimize, as well as ligno boost. We can see the prices for the carbon dioxide, sulfuric acid, and um, sodium hydroxide. And based on these, we can then see the impact. So the impact specifically, we can see in terms of uh, the total site level. We can see for the entire site, the steam consumption, the electricity consumption. And we can also see the breakdown by craft meal, as well as the ligno boost process itself. We can we can see all this. And on the economic impact side, we can also see things uh, such as the total chemical cost due to the ligno boost process. We can see for the craft process, and we can see also for the entire site. So, do we need this? what do we do with all these values and i will show you the next most important step where we're going why we need those values is the decision making metric we need to be able to make valid decisions on the biorefinery uh, process and so for example we have some induced metrics such as the payback period internal rate of return net present value we can see the detailed metrics for this uh, process we also have some new metrics which we've implemented, we have the definition, such as the competitive access to biomass, for example, and we also have something called resistance to market uncertainty, which takes into account the fluctuation in the prices of uh, raw materials as well as energy. So based on this, we have an idea of what the biorefinery looks, looks like. Importantly, we also see uh, LCA-based environmental metrics. And these are uh, separated into the impact categories we can see in terms of human health. We also have um, in progress amplified uh, metrics to represent uh, environmental impact. So a few things I would like to show you also. Um, 
also like to show you is the fact that you can export uh, data to Excel uh, or any other uh, flow cheating software. By using this export feature, you can actually by using this export feature, you can actually generate a file where you have all the typical data for the process. You have the process data, you have the economic data, you have the technical impact, you have the economic impact, as well as decision-making metrics for the biorefinery case study. Something else I would like to add is I would like to show you a quick one, two scenarios before jumping to the next uh, case study on pyrolysis. Like I mentioned earlier, we have the technical impact which represents the result. And based on this, you can also create scenarios. For example, I'm going to create a scenario here. I'm going to create a uh, different scenario. And in the first scenario, what I will do is, for example, when we look at the craft process itself, uh, the Lignobus process, we have all the uh, process data. And from the process data part, I can show you the impact. In the base case, we are extracting about 12.57% of uh, the black liquor extraction. And the impact, we can see the impact here in terms of steam production. What if this value of uh, the targeted extraction were to be 5% or 10% or to be 10%? and create those scenarios, and by running each of the scenarios, I get to see what impact it has. For example, uh, the impact here is extra amount of steam, which we can accommodate. And then I can rerun that. And also for the second case, I can also run it, and then we also have uh, an impact. You can see the impact of those changes any of your technical change on on the biorefinery itself. And so what this means, we can see uh, on, under the technical impact directly, the result, we can see how, for example, the chemical consumption, how much it reduced. Uh, and also, we can also see, uh, particularly for the lignin side, we can see how much of black liquor we're extracting with 5 and 10 percent respectively. And we can see the carbon dioxide consumption out this reduces, as well as uh, the production of uh, the lignin extracted in both cases. Uh, another case I can also easily just uh, take off this scenario and do something else to show you the impact of um, the impact on uh, economic analysis. And what I would like to show you next is the is the impact of uh, lignin price, for example. So I can easily go to the economic impact, uh, economic uh, data, and then here I can say, for example, uh, create different scenarios where we have, what if the lignin price were to be 500? What if it were to be uh, 1,000? I can add one more where it's supposed to be uh, 1,500. A 1,500. And by running the scenarios, what we see will be the impact on both. We can see the impact on the economics directly. And in terms of, uh, we can see in terms of operating costs for the lignobus, uh, not the operating costs in terms of the revenue how much will that affect the revenues. But importantly, I would like to show you the impacts on the decision-making metrics. We can see how the payback period changes with the price of lignin as well as the profitability of the biorefinery. So with this, I would like to um, spend the next 10 minutes showing you 10 to 15 minutes, showing you the impact of uh, a different scenario based on the thermochemical uh, platform. So uh, to summarize this, I would like to also show you the kind of uh, analysis we perform. By, by, like I showed you, we can extract all the data. We can sh I can show you the kind of analysis we perform. And this is just by showing you what happens when we have 
when we compare it based on the life cycle metrics uh, we have conventional PF resin production process as well as lignin based PF resin. And we can see in all cases with the lignin based PF resin production we have improvement for the global warming on renewable energy. However, we can expect to have increased uh, impact on the land occupation, which is because of the biomass uh, which is being used. And uh, based on this, uh, this summarizes the first case study on uh, lignin uh, production with an integrated craft process. The second case study I would like to show you is uh, I will start by creating a new project. And for this new project, we do not require a host type. And this is a thermochemical platform uh, process, a project, uh, based on pyrolysis. We have two main thermochemical uh, conversion uh, models here, which are very, very strongly linked to our existing project. The first is gasification, as well as pyrolysis. And under pyrolysis, we have um, two different uh, models. We have the thermal fast pyrolysis, which is uh, similar to the ENSYN technology. And we also have the catalytic fast pyrolysis. The catalytic fast pyrolysis is um, something similar to IH2, the integrated hydro pyrolysis and hydro conversion uh, platform. So in this case, I'll be showing you um, a case study with uh, catalytic fast pyrolysis. And for this, uh, it's very in line with one of our real life case studies we're working on right now. Uh, the objective is to produce renewable diesel and gasoline on site. And it's also important to be able to produce, uh, use the off gas, produce off gases produced, recycling them, uh, the off gases for hydrogen production. And so with this, I have a catalytic fast pyrolysis unit. And double clicking on this, I gives an idea of what this process involves. And essentially, it comprises of a feedstock being fed in and being streamed and being ground and then dried to higher than 95% uh, solid content, less than 5% moisture. And this reduced size and dried biomass is fed to, into a, a circulating fluidized bed where you have sand being circulated continuously, and you also have the possibility to have, add makeup sand. And uh, as a byproduct, we get some of the ash being produced, uh, exiting the process, and we have the gases being produced, being upgraded, upgraded uh, in the vapor upgrading unit prior to uh, quenching. And during the quenching, we have a secondary char as well as uh, the liquid bio oil being produced, uh, separated in a decant by a decantation unit into an oil rich and lean phase. And the oil rich phase is sent to an hydro treatment uh, unit, unit where the natural gas is used uh, for treatment, as well as uh, the down pot bottoms is sent to a distillation followed by hydro cracking as well as final distillation to obtain gasoline and diesel. This pretty much summarizes uh, the process. And we have typical process inputs here, um, which represents uh, conventional process. We also have utility inputs. And most importantly, we have the CAPEX. I showed you earlier on how that's done, as well as the OPEX. So going back to the pyrolysis unit itself, it tells us we need the feedstock and I will automatically add a feedstock. Tell us we need the water source. We need an electricity source as well as a natural gas uh, source. Something very important is uh, the feed on the feedstock side. Um, what I would like to show you here is the impact of, uh, first of all, the impact of feedstock on the amount of renewable diesel and natural gas you can produce. And uh, prior to that, I need to also specify, like I showed you earlier, the uh, biomass cost function, as well as uh, add a wastewater treatment unit. And for the wastewater treatment unit, I'm going to add a conventional uh, wastewater treatment unit here, with a sludge being sent to landfill. And based on this, we can have a, a, bio, a pyrolysis 
by refinery. So something else I would like to draw your attention to uh, prior to running this is uh, again, I showed you earlier in a our database we have the chemical composition as well as the ultimate analysis. I would like you to note this numbers here, uh, the ash content here. What we have here is 0.66% ash, which is represents a relatively high high value feedstock, which is uh, which is uh, fruit in this case residue. So prior to um, making a comparison, what I will do, uh, one benefit of IBRF is you can actually duplicate projects. And that is what I'll be doing here. I'll be duplicating this project. And uh, I'm duplicating uh, this project, the entire pro project itself. So I have an entirely identical project. The only thing I will be changing in this project now is to be changing the feedstock. The feedstock from, from uh, black spruce. Uh, from biomass to uh, forest residue. And so by changing to forest residue, we have two different cases. So in the first case, uh, I will run the biorefinery and the extra amount of electricity produced will be sold to the grid. And so I will go straight here to, to the impact of, of, of this biorefinery. On the technical impact side, we have uh, the amount of renewable gasoline and diesel being produced. And it's more uh, easy to represent this in terms of liters per year. So in terms of liters per year, we can see we have 37 million liters of renewable gasoline and 48 million liters of renewable diesel. And this is the first case where you have the high value residue. And in the second case study, uh, in the second example, I'm going to run that as well. And by running this, we can then also see directly in the technical impact here. We can see the amount, I will change this also to liters per year for renewable diesel and renewable uh, gasoline and diesel. We can see it's less about 50% of what we were producing. And this, if we go back to the, uh, the process data, this is due solely, uh, um, if we go back, we can see this is due solely to the amount of ash. The amount of ash here is 3.97% compared to 0.66%. And the technical explanation for this is when you have ash, which represents metals and inorganic, this makes the reactions produce more biochar than bio oil. And we can see this impact. And this is one advantage of using the to see to see this. And also, uh, what this means also is when we look, for example, at the, uh, on the decision-making metric side, we can see this. And to see, uh, we see a relative high payback period when you use a low residue biomass. But to remedy this, what something we can also see in terms of the economic data is what if we have government subsidies, for example. I'm going to just create uh, three different scenarios quickly to round up. Um, if we have government sub subsidies, which is equivalent to, I would say, probably 10%, uh, 20%, 30%, uh, of the capital uh, investment for, for this biorefinery, I can also add the last one, which is 40%. We can actually see how this affects the decision-making metric. So based on this, uh, we can see uh, by increasing, increasing that, the uh, payback period reduces significantly, and we can also see how the internal ret uh, return increases, even when you use uh, a low value biomass, we can see that re increasing with rate of return. So based on this, I think I've been able to show you in a nutshell uh, the kind of analysis we can carry out with IBRF using using the uh, 
iBioRef uh, software, we're able to see the impact to different case studies, craft pop meal with integrated link nobles, as well as uh, a pyrolysis or bioenergy project. And these are just a snapshot of what you can do, and there's a lot more you can do. But this is all I can show you within an hour. And with that, I would like to uh, ask Natasha, please, if you can return to the uh, slide seven of the presentation. And uh, I will stop sharing uh, the screen, and we will go back to the presentation. Uh, and Natasha, I will uh, yep. need to go to slide I seven. Of and on full screen. And thank you very much. I think I've been able to capture in a nutshell what you can do with iBioRef and the areas of application. And with that, uh, I'll give uh, back to my uh, Masuk to be able to round up um, on this presentation. So we have a blank screen here. It's taking a couple of seconds to load, I guess, but I think it should be on uh, in a few seconds. Yeah, so thank you, uh, Dr. Limoya Zhou, for this uh, the, uh, uh, demonstration of IBIRF. Uh, clearly, what we have seen here is uh, different uh, different features, different technology, different technology models, and different functionality. And uh, you uh, had the opportunity also to discover the uh, uh, the comprehensive database that we are having on the input uh, data part on the market uh, part two. Clearly, uh, we are facing uh, some issue here with the slide seven. In fact, what I want to to really to go back to the slide, uh, um, introducing uh, at high level iBioRef software platform. Clearly, what we have seen. Uh, within this demonstration that iBioRef is a real uh, project design tool that uh, has the user creating uh, any kind of uh, biofilm on standalone uh, basis or integrated into existing facilities in a step-by-step -step, uh, approach. And this uh, guide, uh, this guides, in fact, non-experts to perform uh, this kind of industrial case study. And uh, more importantly, uh, we have seen also the uh, possibilities to create any kind of scenario that uh, corresponds to the, the needs of the industry. Uh, offering uh, multiple decision-making metrics from the technical, economic, and environmental uh, part. And the last thing that I want to emphasize is the, uh, the, uh, the flexibility of iBioRef architecture. And we have designed, uh, designed a flexible tool with the, the possibility to incorporate any kind of new uh, biofinity technologies that could be developed in the next future. So, uh, regardless uh, of its uh, complexity. So, this is it, uh, Natasha, what I wanted to really wrap up as key features and functionalities of iBarrier. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, I will now pass it over to Murray for the Q&A. Thank you, Natasha, and uh, it's, uh, I think, a very good in presentation, a great in introduction to the uh, the uh, process of the iBioRef, and I think it's uh, going to be something that will add a lot to being able to evaluate new technologies as we develop them into the bioindustrial sector. Uh, so I'll open it up for questions from the, uh, from the audience. Uh, those that are listening, if you've got uh, questions, please uh, let us know.
I'm seeing a few questions coming up on the uh, on the screen here. Um, one was from uh, Ruben. Uh, how how will you offer the uh, product? Will it be through licensing, or uh, what's the process for uh, people accessing the the uh, product? Uh, yeah. Amazon? Yeah, for, for this question, we have, in fact, a short and long uh, answer. The short answer is, for very, very short term, the way that we are transferring the tool is mainly on a training basis. All uh, people that will uh, follow a training with uh, Natural Resources Canada will have uh, access to uh, this version 2.0 with a uh, limited time uh, uh, of utilization. And the second uh, uh, answer is we are currently developing uh, with our uh, intellectual property office a strategy on how to develop nationally, how to transfer nationally, internationally this uh, uh, this tool. Uh, so uh, we are uh, expecting that by somewhere around December we'll have really finalized this uh, uh, licensing uh, process. But for short term, we will be able to uh, to release uh, uh, a version for limited time of use for any request that would be uh, made to us. Okay, uh, thank you. I would like to answer the question from uh, Caroline. Um, is there biodiesel on renewable diesel? We currently have only renewable diesel uh, on uh, on the iBiref platform, but then. Um, we have the possibility within a short time period to develop models because the architecture we have is so flexible to be able to implement models incre incrementally. Torrefaction. Okay. And the um, same thing applies also to the torrefaction process. It's one of our future uh, models uh, being planned and in progress. But then it's not yet complete at the moment, and I would like Mazdot if you can comment on how much time it did take to develop uh, Mad Month uh, project. Yeah. yeah, in fact, the uh, the tool uh, we, we started really to uh, develop this tool uh, since uh, four years, and uh, of course during the last. Uh, more specifically, uh, the last two years were uh, very, uh, I should say, heavily dedicated to develop all these technology models and the uh, the, uh, the industrial plan. But overall, uh, we are having uh, two, uh, I should say, two uh, programmers uh, on. Uh, uh, full-time basis uh, plus the uh, our staff as experts in biofilm uh, to develop all this uh, uh, over three uh, uh, FTA uh, are involved from the uh, biofilm uh, team uh, to develop this uh, tool. And do we have some question? Uh, a question from uh, Stockholm. Yes, the uh, you will have the uh, access to the uh, the PowerPoint file. Natasha will uh, distribute this, and uh, for the uh, the software itself, we uh, do not have uh, a web uh, application, but we have a brochure that we can share with Natasha. Then will she will distribute it. Yep, and the uh, the presentations will be on the IEA Bioenergy website as well under webinars, so you can also access it through there as well. Yes, regarding the uh, another question uh, on the email uh, to make any request, we'll uh, provide also to Natasha the uh, the email uh, to to uh, send all your requests uh, on uh, the software itself. Yeah, there is another question uh, on bio bioethanol production uh, part. Uh, yes, in fact, uh, we have we are working for now. We, we did not disclose it, but uh, since we are working, uh, 
on uh, fermentation, uh, as I said, on bioconversion. Uh, we are working deeply on uh, bioethanol platform, but more specifically on biobutanol platform. In very short term, uh, by the end of March 2019, we are uh, projecting to implement detailed uh, models for both bioethanol and biobutanol.